In this lesson, we'll continue a review of Math Test 7, Section 3, No Calculator, Questions 11 and 12. So we're getting further into this section. We know these will be more difficult questions than we saw previously. Number 11. The expression where x is greater than 1 or y is greater than 1 is equivalent to which of the following? This is really just testing your knowledge of powers and exponents and how to re-express them, what they're equivalent to. And a good strategy for these types of questions is first look at the answer choices just to see how they're grouped. And if you notice, all of the choices have a Y on the top, X on the bottom, Y on the top, X on the bottom. So that should give you some direction. We need to group them accordingly. So let's start here. We've got X to the negative two. Any exponent or any anytime you see a power to the negative, that's being one over that. And so that's actually helpful because we want an x on the bottom. And so we know that x to the negative 2 is just going to be 1 over x squared. And we want the x on the bottom. So that really helps us. And so now we've got an x squared on the bottom. And here we already have an x on the bottom, but we've got to re-express that x to the 1 third. Anytime you have a exponent that's a fraction, just remember a fraction is always going to be power over root. All right, and so the, it's one third, so that means the power is one, the root is three, and so x, it, x to the first power is just x, but that's the cube root. Remember, power over root when you have a fraction, and so that's going to be the cube root of x. And if you look at the choices here, we really only have one that works so far. It has to be D. And again, if you're looking to save time, I would probably select D and move on. But let's just work through these for the sake of um, just covering these concepts. We need to get the Y's on the top. And here we have Y to the 1 half. Y to the 1 half is the square root of Y. And that's on the, on the top, so that's fine. So it's the square root of Y. And here we have a Y on the bottom, and it's to the negative 1 half. And so negative 1. So that's going to be 1 over. To the negative, it's going to be 1 over y. And so even though it's 1 over, remember, it's already on the bottom. We've got to get that on the top. And you may be able to recognize that it's just going to convert into just y. But another way of thinking about it is how do we clear this fraction with any ratio, with any equation, as long as we do the same to the top and the bottom, or both sides, it, we're not changing it. So if we just multiply both sides by y, this is going to cancel out and just get 1, and it's going to be y. And so that's the last step, and that's it. And just like we would already confirmed the answer is d, it's just re-expressing and knowing your concepts with exponents and roots. Question 12. The function f of x is defined as x plus 3 times the quantity x plus 1. The graph of f in the xy plane is a parabola. Which of the following intervals contains the coordinate of the vertex of graph f? This is a common question. You have to, this is a nonlinear equation, it's a parabola. How do we find the vertex? It depends on what form is given. Remember, there is standard form, there is vertex form, and there is intercept form. And if you don't recognize these right away, you really should go back and review these. You need to know all of these different forms of a parabola. And here, this is already in intercept form. We could just look at this. These are both factors of the, the function. We said this earlier. If these are factors, we know that the two roots, the two solutions, are going to be minus 3 and minus 1. So if you think about it, this is an upward opening parabola because it's there's no negative. And it would cross at negative 1, it would cross the x at negative 1 and negative 3. All right, And so how do we get the axis of symmetry? How do we know this point right in the middle? I apologize for the drawing. It's using a different tablet and it's a little bit more difficult to write. So we know that these are the two intercepts. How do we get the vertex? They're only asking for the x-coordinate, which is just the, it's just the this axis of symmetry, which is right in the middle. And you may be able to do this intuitively because we know a parabola is always symmetric. It's really just the midpoint of these two. It's the average. And so you could just see, well, you could just see this is negative 2. Sometimes they're more difficult. You have to just add them up and divide by 2. Negative 2 is the x-coordinate. Now, 
let's say we can solve this right now. That's all the questions are asking for. We know it has to contain negative two. The only one that contains negative two is B. What if the question asks for the Y coordinate? Again, it depends on what form, but we already have this in intercept form. Once you get the X, all you have to do is you plug it into both because it's the midpoint. You plug it into both of these. So we're gonna plug in a negative two here and a negative two. So negative two plus three, that's gonna be positive one. And then negative two plus one is negative one. And you multiply negative one times one, we know that the Y coordinate would be negative one. And so this point here, the vertex, is negative two, one, they're only asking for the x, and so the answer, negative two, this is the range that contains it.